This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Ruddy! And guess. And isn't there a piece of evidence that's still unaccounted for? Something that I still can't quite fit into the big picture. Oh, what was that thing? Uh, the Mr. wallet? Mr. Stewart took the a wallet? photo of him at the museum. No, not that thing. Uh, wasn't it the wallet that we found? We didn't, like, do anything with that. The piggy bank? No, the wallet. The straight-up travel wallet. Like, there's a passport. This piece of evidence will answer all of our questions. Are you sleep presenting or something? No, as you can plainly see, I am wide awake. Uh, I'm afraid you failed. You were making so little sense that I thought maybe you were asleep. Ah! Oh, wait, that's the same it's dialogue the for a completely different situation. Okay. I knew it was once we started. Uh, the cargo, the, the, wait, the cloth? No, we already, we already talked about the cloth. The statue? It was smuggled on board. Back to the head. A uh, no, blow cargo. to the head. Cargo was four to five. They were back when we took off at five. And then that was taken from the cargo hold. And... So do you think it's the statue then? It could be the statue. I think it might it's be the fit. shipping time. This? Yeah, maybe. That we haven't really talked about at all. Oh, I forgot how good this music is. Take that! Nope. Maybe it's the thing you thought it was. Take that! Nope. What are we supposed to do? Are Take we that! This, I think. What? Okay, just start presenting stuff. Um, uh. Oh, the cell phone! Oh, wait, we forgot about the cell phone. I, it's been a while. Yeah, duh. Not really. Not it's been a while for me, too. I don't have any actual evidence. I thought not. But that's because it went missing, and still is. Missing? What do you mean by that? In the complex puzzle that is this case, there was one piece I kept getting stuck on. And that is the victim's cell phone. Franziska, you were waiting at the airport for a phone call from Agent Hicks's cell phone. Or at least that's what you told me. That's right. But Agent Hicks's cell phone could not be found at the crime scene. You mean, the killer took the phone with them? Precisely. I suspect that if you were to find that phone, it would lead us to the killer. Ha <laughs> ha Come on! Get serious! If the victim fell to his death from that height, wouldn't his phone break as well? We won't know that until we try a little experiment, will we? Franziska, I'd like to ask for your assistance. You know the victim's phone number, do you not? Of course I do! Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. I don't think so. Agent Hicks's phone. It's ringing from somewhere, sir. I hear it, Detective. Now where's it coming from? Suitcase from Cammy. Back, back, back. Probably from Cammy. I'm happy, Jim. Okay, <laughs> no. If it's under. Sounds like the phone is up in the flight attendant's room. We better hurry to the flight attendant's room, sir. Oh, it does. <laughs> Just talk to the people. Uh, Miss Mio, wake up! Sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. I got sleepy all of a sudden because it sounds like a lullaby I used to love as a child. <laughs> Is it Zelda's lullaby? <laughs> you better find that cell phone fast. Sorry, Mr. Usher. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth. Don't worry, Miss Tenero. I will get to the bottom of this and find the truth. So please wait here while I return. I'm not looking at you or anything. <laughs> Alright. Thank you for all you've done, Mr. Edgeworth. It sounds like it's coming from the flight attendant's room. I agree. Please don't hang up just yet. Let me find it first. That's fine, but let's get one thing straight. Yes? Don't you dare answer his phone when you find it, understand? I understand that you don't want to pay for the call. You don't, you don't, have, un <laughs> you don't have unlimited cell phone? Oh, well, I guess it is an earlier game. Most of the time now we get the unlimited. Where wow. is it coming March from? March 12th, 4, 12 it p.m. Under, it's in the flight it's defense room. clearly not under the covers or anything. The ringing's coming from somewhere in here, sir. Leave no stone unturned, Detective Gumshoe. We must find it. My favorite is that the phone hasn't been like, you've reached the voicemail of... Agent Hicks, bro! <laughs> also known as Mr. Stewart. <laughs> also known as, as Chalkboard Charlie. Chalkboard Charlie! <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it might be inside this suitcase. I don't hear any sounds coming from inside, sir. I don't suppose the culprit would have been so dumb as to try the same trick twice. 
Oh, well, you'd be surprised. Doesn't seem to be over here. Then let's look somewhere else, sir! Check the bed. Or the Check trash the can. Check the trash can! It's like gross. Doesn't seem to be the phone. It doesn't seem like the phone got mixed in with the items in this lost and found file. Where did file. the policeman go? My forensics! I don't know! <laughs> so what? <laughs> What's did he that? take? Did he take like the uh, Borginian man off of the <laughs> you cargo? Mister LeBlanc. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> sir, you can't be here. Well, it's not like the victim would have dropped it somewhere, right? Check the trash. Doesn't seem to be over here in the trash can. Check the bed. Not the trash can. The ringing is coming from somewhere around here. But it's not here, sir. Why do I have such a bad feeling about what we're going to find this phone? About where we're going to find the phone? And then, then check. Gumshoe's like, shut up, Edward. No. The ringing's coming from in here, sir. I examined that already! Yeah. <laughs> what? What? No, it can't be. This has got to be the victim's cell phone. Just whose locker is this, sir? It's Miss Teneros. What? Well, Miss Cammy, Cammy could have been like, um, can you hold on to this for me? March 12th, 428 like, well, I, I, I guess so. What is it? Oh, it's my boyfriend's phone. It's my, it's the pilot's phone, but he can't have his phone in the, because he gets distracted. And don't <laughs> he drive. He's just playing Bejeweled <laughs> while trying to find him. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't text and drive. How'd it go? Where did you find the phone? I found it in the flight attendant's room, in Miss Tenero's locker. What? But, but, Rhoda, Rhoda Tenero! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about the phone. I'm not sure if we mentioned last video, I think it was after we recorded. Our, our friend with Francisca, she's always jet lagged. Yeah, she's always jet lagged, but she's not the one who's jet lagged this time. <laughs> Unless if she caught a flight and then was like, oh, I have a change here, now I can just like wait here until the dude lands. But if Francisca's acting weird, it's just like, she's jet lagged. <laughs> she always yeah, goes she around always jet lagged. Mm -hmm. She's also pretty weird though. She's like the girl who's like, okay, can you imagine being friends with Francisca when she's young? It's like, hey Francisca, can you come to my house and play? She's like, no, I have to be a prosecutor. <laughs> Dang it, nobody cares, Brittany. She's like, like, like she has no friends, okay? No, no wonder she's so lonely as an adult. No, no 13 year old girl who's trying to be a lawyer would ever really, like, I feel like would make friends if she's already that famous at 13. Right. Because there's a reason her mind's sharp and thus she sees because, through everybody and. Here's the thing for me, Francisca could be such a tragic and, like, sympathetic character, but she's just such a butt to she's everyone. A butt? But, like,. <laughs> I don't Except know. Sister Bikini. Sister Bikini was like the one person she was nice Sister to. Sister Bikini and, and Adrian Anders. That's true. Adrian That's, Anders, she was well, like, you're like top notch people. Okay. Not exactly. Because exactly. she was also like, Adrian Andrews, don't talk in court. If you do, you're going to be found guilty. <laughs> and well, like, that almost screwed her up like over completely. Right. But she was also like, yo, Adrian, you gotta like stand up for yourself, man. Here, I'll teach you how to use a whip. <laughs> I'll teach you how to use a whip. She's like, um, okay. It, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> Miss Von Karma, is it? I suggest you arrest Miss T Rhoda Tenero right away. Objection! Wait, I have a theory. A game theory. theory. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, Edgeworth. No one cares about video games right now. Darn it! All right, well, but but this is related to the incident with the key card. When the killer went to steal the key card, they conveniently stashed the cell phone in Miss Tenero's locker at the same time. Objection! This is related to the key card, all right. In the same way that we have zero proof that the killer did just that. Yeah. The only voice that sings the truth is evidence. That is the only bird we cannot ignore. What should I do? Francisca's right. I can't offer baseless conjectures at this point like Phoenix Wright does. <laughs> yeah. Alright then, why did the culprit take the cell phone from Agent Hicks? It must have something very incriminating on or in it. What now, Miles Edgeworth? It's not over yet. No fat lady a son. Also, what the heck are you doing here, LeBlanc? <laughs> oh yeah, he just va he just materialized. <laughs> I am here for my cargo, you dumb butt. <laughs> <laughs> I you were gonna say something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always go with butt instead of the other one. Yeah, yeah, probably. We have yet to figure out why the killer took the phone. What? 
Inside this phone lies the final piece of incriminating evidence that will point us to our killer. We need to examine this phone in more detail. Did you detail. know that Mr. Stewart and Cammie were dating? <laughs> yes, because I played this before. They broke the phone. The LCD is broken. Without a screen, you can't even place a call with this. But I can receive calls. Camera? Ah! It's a camera lens! Come to think of it, I wonder. How exactly was Agent Hicks planning to preserve the crime scene of the smuggling? Francisca! I need you to confirm something. This cell phone, can it take pictures? Mr. Edgeworth, I can't believe you don't know about this kind of basic stuff, sir. The look, uh, this looks like a very similar model to my own. And mine can take photos just fine. Do you think Agent Hicks could have taken some pictures with this? In particular, pictures as evidence for his smuggling case? If so, I'd say there may be some very inconvenient photos in here for our killer smuggler. But the phone's all busted up, sir. Even a super prosecutor can't repair a broken phone. Grr! I'll find a way, don't you worry about that. Ooh, uh, may I go back to sleep now? Objection! The LCD screens are the, on the inside and outside are broken, that's for sure. But that's also reason enough to believe that the killer wasn't able to erase the data. What? What do you mean by that, Francisca? It looks like our killer isn't very familiar with electronics. This phone still rang when I called it, meaning that only the LCD screens are broken. It's possible that the photos are still inside, waiting to be accessed. All we need to do is transfer the data to my phone. Francisca, your phone if you please. Very well. I do like when they cooperate. It's cool. It's transferring. Alright, displaying it now. <laughs> yes, it's bed sheets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's bed sheets. <laughs> this is... Agent Hicks was most certainly trying to obtain some evidence for his smuggling case. Hey! The Alfred's nowhere in this pic, sir! But this has no meaning as a piece of evidence in this murder case, right? Ouch! She's right. There's not much we could do out- uh, There's not much we can find out from this about Agent Hicks's killer, sir. No, we could. Is this it? Is this the end? We can totally find something else. Is there really nothing in this photo that we can use? Uh, the bed- Is the bed sheets moved? The bed sheets weren't there before. No, I think they were there. Boxes of bed sheets. <laughs> Bud's light your bed sheets. Yep, yep. <laughs> These are still in the cargo hold. There's nothing unusual about them in particular, but I can't shake the feeling. Uh, if you're just gonna play around, mind if I go home? Yes, I mind. I need to focus on what's different now from well, back then. Well, now if he had fallen, there would have been nothing there, one. And two, if he fell, he would have hit four boxes and then they just would have gone... <laughs> right. What's all this? Hmm. Oh, they are cargo shipped from Borgenia to Zainfa. So the reason they aren't here now is that they were dropped off in Zainfa. Mr. LeBlanc, can you tell me the contents of the boxes? Unfortunately, there is no English written on them anywhere. Hmm. One cluster of boxes is written in Borginian. It says... <laughs> it is cloth in English. Cloth? Could it be? Is this where the killer... Wh what What is that scary face for? Miss Meal? Yeah? It appears that Agent Hicks was no ordinary investigator. He left us with a piece of evidence Ooh. after all. When she's angry, she looks like the Inkling girl. Wee wee wee. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. A striking piece that will point out who his killer so is. she's under her eyeliner, um, thing. Ha! Maybe you shouldn't force your mis <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't force your mistaken reading of a simple picture, Mr. It's Edward. okay, she's jet-lagged. She's really sleepy. The Borginian cargo and this piece of evidence will point us straight to the killer. It's obvious. I made it clear. I no! want to live in America. <laughs> Would you care to fill me in on what you're trying to prove with that? It's quite simple. It shows that I will be re-presenting my evidence. I'm not laughing. It, it wasn't meant to be a laughing matter. That, that is funny. Take that! And what's that supposed to prove? The killer used this piece of cloth to wipe up the blood they had spilt. But there was one thing that bothered me this whole time. <coughs> where, where did it come from? And now I have finally found my answer in this very photo. The cargo that was unloaded in Zainfa had cloth written on it. In Borginian, that is. 
And this is where the killer grabbed a piece from to clean up the blood with. That's right. The killer was someone who could read and understand Borginian. And the only crew member that fits that description is you, Miss Cammy Meal. Ah, that's pretty flimsy. The killer probably searched through all the boxes looking for something to use. When you're frantic, you don't care if the box is in English or in Borginian. Sorry, but I cannot agree with your assessment of the killer's indiscriminate nature. What? There was no need for the killer to tear through boxes at random at all. And if the killer supposedly could not comprehend Borginian, well then. Logically, the killer would have opened this box first. Take that! This proves that the killer knew how to read Borginian. Oh right, they would have opened bedsheets. <laughs> yes, it's bedsheets! <laughs> yes, it's bedsheets! <laughs> you don't fool me! Don't pretend as though you don't see what I'm talking about. I don't understand either. I don't get it at all, sir. Alright then, I will show it to I'm you so once happy. again in more- <laughs> Those stinking bedsheets save our case! You don't fool me! Don't pretend as though you know what you're talking about. I probably should have known better than to play pretend. <laughs> bed sheets for the same. Bed sheets for the win. Hey, it says bed sheets in English right on the box, sir. Precisely, and bed sheets would be perfect for cleaning up blood, wouldn't you say? Also for giving Andy as a birthday gift. <laughs> so what are you trying to say? That if I were the criminal, this box of bed sheets would have been what I would have spotted first. However, the killer chose to use some Borginian cloth. Do you have an explanation for that? The killer didn't want anyone to know that the real scene of the crime was this cargo hold. So they were afraid to leave signs that the box for the sheets had been opened. However, the Borginian cloth? Well, that's a horse of a different color. Because the killer knew that it was going to be unloaded in the Republic of Zeng Fa? That's right. That is why the Borginian cloth was used. And the only Borginian reader on board who could make such a calculated decision is you, Cammy Meal. You and you alone. It would be very easy for us to confirm if any of the boxes were resealed. All we would have to do is contact the Zanefa authorities in time. We may even find other evidence to incriminate our killer within those boxes. <laughs> so what do you say, Miss Meal? Why not confess to your crime here and now? Or would you rather wait and see what we find out from our investigation in Zanefa? She might be my favorite breakdown from the game. No! Just like all the bubbles, like. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> March... I was like, what is gonna happen? Is she gonna be like exercised or is she gonna be like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was totally off. <laughs> I thought she was just gonna fall over and fall asleep. <laughs> March 12, 5, 26 p.m. Okay. The Flight 390. We finished making all the arrangements to take the suspect in, sir. Very good, detective. What about the smuggling route? Did she say anything about that? They're taking her down to the precinct now. Hopefully we can get more out of her there. Whenever we even approached the topic, she just started foaming at the mouth. <laughs> it was scary, sir. She probably wasn't prepared to commit a murder all of a sudden. One thing is for sure, the ring behind this whole mess means serious business. It looks like there's a lot more to this case than meets the eye. Mr. Edgeworth. I just wanted to say how much I appreciate everything you did. Thank you so much. It was nothing. In fact, I should be the one thanking you for your cooperation. But truly, if it wasn't for you, I might not be here right now. Instead, I can continue to serve our passengers as a flight attendant. Um, I hope that, well, please accept this as a token of my appreciation. Th that's... I see. You don't have to take it if you don't want it. N no. I mean, I would never turn down a lady's generous offer. Thank you. 
I'm sure it will serve you well. And remember, we here at iFly Airlines are always ready to serve, Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you. I'll keep that in mind. Her smile is creepy. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now I must bid farewell. May all your skies be blue, no matter where you go. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. you. She's also one of the few normal people. Yeah, her, Penny, slightly Maggie, but not really. And um, Maggie's quirky. Maggie's kind of quirky. Adrian Andrews. She's not... Uh, she's pretty normal. Fairly so. For she's Ace Attorney standards. For Ace Attorney standards, she's not like a guy who can communicate with birds. <laughs> <laughs> she's not. <laughs> she's I not guess a girl. Me, who, she's guess, not a lady who drinks paint. I guess Winston Payne can kind of also be normal. Winston Payne's pretty normal. He's just like a normal <laughs> middle aged man. Even Jacques Ports, but it's like, oh, he likes sports. That's okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's pretty, he's pretty weird to have a basketball hoop outside of his <laughs> freaking door. I can't believe we wound up investigating the whole day, sir. But boy, was it fun. Speak for yourself, my day was filled with earthquakes, elevators, and false charges. By the way, where's Franziska? Yeah. Oh, she's filling out some customs paperwork for her departure. Freaking departure. De departure. Yeah, Miss Von Karma's always really busy, sir. She's been flying from country to country to chase down some leads regarding <laughs> her case. Yeah, <laughs> I told you! <laughs> Detective, can you cancel the car I had you reserve earlier? You got it, sir! Let's talk. March 12th, 5.47pm, Hope Springs Airport. My favorite airport. Franziska? I thought I told you when you first landed. I have no time for idle chatter. I have no intention of wasting your time. However, it has been a while since we last met. I also have no time for such familiar reminiscence. Just who do you think I am? You are Franziska von Karma, a very proud prosecutor deserving of much respect. <laughs> Only until a little while ago, I was but a wretched mutt who was always losing to you. A dancing periot- er, periot? Periot! Living her life on the name and fame of her invincible father's built. <laughs> That, yeah, jet lag. <laughs> True. <I can't> <laughs> True, your father, Manfred von Karma, didn't lose a single case for 40 years as a prosecutor. However, I wouldn't say he was invincible. What are you talking about? Does she not know? The group I'm on the trail of is a little more troublesome than most. I, I will say this she doesn't know the full extent. Of well, what yeah. Manfred is done. Here's the thing, though. If you're like, hmm, father's been prosecutor for 40 years. Never and lost. He was just killed. <laughs> so. <laughs> maybe he did some stuff? <laughs> Ugh, it's that bullet in my shoulder. It was so painful. I need mean, you just die. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't let it happen at the spa, though. <laughs> right? She's actually, like, actually, whatever. his spa appointments were like crucial to like actually he was gonna die of stress unless he got it so by us not letting him go to his spa point that killed him <laughs> he's just like Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> and then uh, he also bashed his head into the wall a lot that probably gave him a few concussions a few did you read that, read that are you okay. the smuggling route we found this time is only one sliver of the big picture sounds like a dangerous assignment you really don't have to worry i can take care of myself Yes, I suppose you can. Plus, there's another agent on this case with me. Oh, another Who is agent. It? Is it Apollo Justice? No. Apollo Justice is like 16 right now. Oh, never mind. Uh, is it Latu? <laughs> He's yeah, a star among Interpol agents and has the highest successful arrest rate. Who knows? You may even run into him one day. Hmm. I was simply caught up in this one case. I hardly see why we'd, we would cross paths. I suppose. But I doubt he would say the same. I'm not following you. You'll understand soon enough. The flight has only just- or the fight has only just begun, Miles Edgeworth. I'm jet lagged. I'll be back in this country soon enough. And when I am, you can be sure I'll pay you back. In full. Where's she flying Love you to? too, Franziska. <laughs> Honorary siblings. Yeah. It's just like that she's gone, huh, sir? Thank goodness! I can finally rest easy knowing I won't have to watch out for her whip! Detective Gumshoe, I want to thank you for all your help and cooperation. Aw, oh, it was nothing, sir. I was just happy to be able to work with you again. <laughs> I think I'm gonna celebrate by adding a little extra salt to my instant noodles tonight. <sighs> just how much did you cut his salary by, Francisca? Detective, I was wondering if you might give me a ride down to the prosecutor's office. 
Sure thing, sir! I'll even fly down the road in the patrol car if you want! Don't make me remind you, Detective. Safety first. Remember, Robin, public safety is every man's <laughs> responsibility. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thus, I solved the first case upon my arrival home. Franziska von Karma. The smuggling route she was after. The leaders of that ring had already put their trump card into play. And the players on the other side of this war... They would begin to make themselves known for the next incident. After the next thing, maybe? Hmm. Edgeworth speaking. Oh, finally! I called who knows how many times earlier, but I couldn't get through. <laughs> Is this Gant with a really weird voice? <laughs> That's, That's not my Gant voice. <laughs> oh, Worthy, you do go. No, but if he, no, if you're, if, it sounded like Gant if he's trying to disguise it's, his it's, voice. It's Gant mixed with like a Grossberg kind, kind of, of my yeah. voice, and you are. Uh, have you forgotten my voice, Miles, my boy? M Mr. Amano, Ernest Amano, correct? Oh, uh -huh, so you do remember me? Ernest Amano. Uh, I know it's rather sudden, but I can't ask this of anyone else. There's been an incident, Miles. My son, he's been kidnapped. Another kidnapping case, great. Cool. Ba -da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, that's Franzic to the left. That's what I thought. Second to the left. That's what I thought. I was like... A brand new episode's been like added. She was... The kidnapped turnabout. Another kidnapping. Hopefully this child isn't like too... <laughs> Save up <laughs> to this point. I will say this is the case where the game actually starts getting good. Because I don't like the first two cases. You don't like the first two cases? What no. about the Okay, again, you you made oh, her voice. It's better. a it's a wolf. We're gonna meet a wolf next time. <laughs> Edgeworth meets Star Wolf oh, yes. and Star Fox. Yes. Next time. Or or like a Togwell from uh, <laughs> the Togwell. Fine fine work for a man. Decent, Decent for, for a Togwell. Togwell. Oh, man, how racist are you? <laughs> Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks for watching everybody. I I think the next case is still not amazing, but it definitely is I'd say it's a, a kidnapper case? It's it's better. Usually those are pretty good. It's better than the first two. We've had, okay, like so you made the first two cases better for me because I liked being able to joke around with like the basketball stuff in the first <laughs> yeah, case, yeah. and I liked your Cami Meal voice in the second case. It was perfect. Yeah, I Anyhow, was around. Yeah. Next episode will be exciting because we we really haven't met like any of the main characters of the game yet. <laughs> oh wow! Did you know I'm I'm a prosecutor? I'm a defense attorney, and I have an obsession with wolves. They wear like wolf ears and a tail wherever they go. Okay, that's I don't know, your maybe prediction. or or like maybe um maybe it's like a really weird defense attorney that's like um I can't go anywhere without my dog. Not not because the, <laughs> not because the dog is like needs to be there for medical reasons. Just like the dog has to be with me in court, has to be with me everywhere. He just really likes his. He just really likes. His dog. I don't care about kids. Go. I want my dog. I want my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow. Wow. Tune in next time. Okay. We're never going to end it. Now, have a great day and God bless everybody. Woo!